I'm going to talk with you this afternoon about aloe vera. This is a plant that you can have in your home at your disposal for a variety of purposes. It can be used as medicine, as a herb, or as food. Aloe vera has its roots in Africa. Most of the familiar plants that we are currently using, the cultivars, have originated from Africa and were actually bred by the Egyptians. Aloe vera has spread worldwide and is found in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, as well as the Americas. Aloe vera is a desert, subtropical, succulent plant within the lily family and within its genus there's over 200 different species. As a herb, aloe vera can be used as a fresh option, like here, this is the fresh stalks, or it can be used filleted where you use the gelatinous mixture inside as a demulcent, or you can use the whole stalk itself, including the outer portion, as a vermifuge, so helping to expel parasites, as well as a carthar carthartic herb. This means that it helps to quicken the pace of elimination, the evacuation of the bowels. It's not quite a laxative, and it's certainly not a purgative in adults, meaning that it doesn't evacuate all the bowels, so it can be used as a food. But as a herb, internally aloe vera is used as an amenagogue. This means that it helps in women who are experiencing menses to increase the blood flow during this time. Therapeutically, it's not ideal if one already has an increased flow of blood during menses, but for those who do not, this can be used therapeutically. It can be used as a vulnerary herb, meaning that it helps to speed up the healing of wounds, cuts, abrasions, and topically it's been known to be used as a burn remedy, particularly sunburns. Topically this herb is also beneficial for helping to alleviate inflammation in cases of eczema or psoriasis. Internally aloe vera can be used as a demulcent as well as a voluntary, meaning that it helps to alleviate inflammation or even ulceration, so it's soothing to the intestinal tract. It can be used in the cases of ulcers of the stomach or ulceration of the colon in the case of ulcerative colitis or as the case of Crohn's disease throughout the small intestine and the large intestine. So therapeutically one would want to use the inner fillet, avoid the use of the outer fillet, so avoid the use of the actual outer stalk portion because this is going to be a, have a mild purgative effect. And for people who are, particularly women, who are either pregnant or lactating, this herb should be avoided. In the case of lactation, it can pass onto the child and act as a strong purgative, which is not good for young children. And in the case of pregnant women, it can actually trigger uterine contractions, so it should be avoided altogether. As a food, this plant has been used from the ancient Egyptians to the Essenes and the Greeks. The ancient Egyptians, they started cultivating this plant and Cleopatra was known to apply this plant topically to her skin and it was one of her beauty tonics. She was known worldwide at that time for her beauty and elegance and this plant helped with that process. The reason is, is this plant contains a variety of polysaccharides. These are complex sugar molecules containing oxygen as well as carbon and hydrogen. Their long chains are particularly beneficial for the skin, for the muscles as well as the tendons, so it helps in flexibility, increasing flexibility in the beauty and the growth of the skin. And it's also seen to be beneficial for the brain and the nervous system as well. As a food, aloe vera is useful in reducing weight and gaining lean muscle mass. It can be used 
for longevity. In the case of the Essenes, aloe vera was one of their primary foods as a herb. And the Essenes at their period of time were known to live anywhere between 100 to 125 years of age. This is in a period of time where the average lifespan in that region, it's a Jewish sect, so around Israel, the average lifespan in that region was only 39 years. So I can't say whether aloe vera was distinctly responsible for this, but it's certainly a superfood worth considering. So I hope you try it at your home. Start off with a small piece. You can utilize the fillet portion. So if you want to use it just topically on your skin, you want to fillet the outer, outer skin portion, allowing for the mucologenous portion inside to be available. This can be used topically on your skin, as I'll demonstrate. It is quite bitter. You'll want it to dry and soak in. And ideally, wait a little while before you wash it off. This can be used in cases of sunburn on the skin, eczema, psoriasis, any kind of inflammation. It's going to help soothe and heal from cuts and abrasions. Was that the flat end of the leaf you cut off? It doesn't really matter. All I'm doing here is I'm making the fillet portion accessible. So I've basically used up all the gelatinous portion. I could experiment with taking the other part of the skin off again, so not to waste it. Mm -hmm. Ideally, this is best used fresh. It's a little more difficult once you've peeled away both parts of the skin. But what you're left with here is this is the inner fillet. Now, See that? See it's got a nice gelatinous texture to it. You can use that on the face now that the skin's all gone. <laughs> now if I wasn't to have used this on my skin, you could actually eat this inner filet. Add it to a smoothie in small quantities to start. I wouldn't recommend just eating it outright because it's extremely bitter and is very, very strong to the palate. Mixing it with some fruit or some greens will be helpful for taste. So that is my demonstration of aloe vera. I hope that you utilize this plant to its full capacities. Use it as a food therapeutically in small doses or add it in as a herb for a variety of medicinal properties.